Yes, we have Samuel Graib from Planet Hemp. Yes, any of them, yes. And it looks like we'll also be joined by... Hello. Alan King. Alan King. Come on up, brother. Yes, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I'm so happy to have you. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you the floor. Do you Thank have you a presentation much. that you would like to share with us today? Well, I, I was planning to be on a panel, so we're kind of just going to just freestyle this and just kind of talk a little bit about our projects, I think, and then wherever the conversation takes us, because I think we both have a lot to talk about when it comes to NFTs and fashion. Yes. So I agree. Go for Why it. don't we take a seat? I'd love to. Nice outfit, by the way. Thank you. You got Thank fantastic you. swag. Thank you. I think all of us here have a lot of fashion swag going on here. And I'm curious to know, firstly, please introduce yourself and share how you got into fashion. What, what really inspired you to, to dial in your fashion and then start spreading it in the NFT space? Hey, everyone. So I'm Alan from A-Kings. Um, how I got into fashion originally was straight out of high school. I you know, grew up in New York, so born and raised. I saw the resale culture of you know, the hype behind Supreme, Pyrex, HBA, and all of that coming up. And uh, with hip hop culture being such a big influence, uh, fashion was one of those uh, key culture moments. You know? So uh, for me, that was where I saw like, wow, fashion is not just something you wear. It's something that is collectible. It's something that's art. It's creative expression and its identity. And um, you know, I think that's very much what NFTs also represent. You know? um, so, it was just like a natural progression to where I am today as a fashion brand with an NFT collection. Gold, gold. That's incredible how you shifted, how you realized, how you really dialed in your gifts and leaned into that. And that's been a repetitive theme here on the stage. I'm curious to know, how did you get into fashion? Where, where did it stem from, this, this desire to express yourself with clothes and like Alan shared more so as you're expressing your inner self. Absolutely. Um, for me, it actually started with um, hemp itself, the, just the plant. Um, I knew I wanted to get involved with manufacturing anything. I didn't really know. I, I thought I started, I thought I wanted to start with plastic actually. Um, but as I kind of started to hone in on the business model, I realized that clothing was more in my lane because it's a family trade. Uh, growing up, my grandma was always sewing like PJs and she actually made my mom's wedding gown. So she, and she reupholsters um, furniture. So that skill set was in the family and she taught my mom a lot. Um, so whenever I dropped out of college to pursue my business, my, my family was super thrilled about that. <laughs> And my mom uh, was first in line to start helping helping grow the, the company <laughs> after she was, you know, got over the emotional part of being upset with me about dropping out of school. <laughs> but my grandma actually did some research on hemp and convinced her um, how amazing it is. It's a sustainable material. You don't need pesticides to grow hemp, and uh, it's very durable. And so, really, was hemp itself, and then the family trade that kind of came together, and made me realize it's what I needed to be doing. Well, I'm curious to know, what is it about hemp that reignited your light and reminded you that this was in your blood to create fashion? Yeah. So hemp, like I said, you can make like tens of thousands of products out of hemp. And the first one that really caught my attention was plastic because you could replace petroleum with a biodegradable material and not sacrifice any quality. Um, but with fabric, you don't need pesticides to grow hemp, and cotton uses an enormous amount of pesticides. I've heard different estimates, but I've heard between 15 and 25 percent of the world's pesticides and insecticides are used to grow cotton. So um, our fabrics are all organic hemp-based, and our NFT project is actually centric around verifying our sustainability claims. And then my favorite, actually what I like even better about what we do is we, local every, we locally manufacture everything, so I know who actually puts the pieces together. And so our NFT project is going to verify those time, production timestamps and um, just verify all the claims of sustainability and ethical production that we make. Gold, gold. And I'm curious to know, Alan, are there specific materials that you use in your fashion? Can you share with me more 
especially for those here who have not yet seen the fashion, can you describe how this fashion looks like and what it's made of? Yeah, so the, um, so the easiest way to describe our clothing is, you know, clothing that makes you feel like a king. Um, we're, a streetwear, we're a streetwear label. Uh, so we have, you know, hoodies, t-shirts, jeans, um, hats, bags, leather accessories, rings, jewelry. Um, I think that, you know, in terms of where we are is we, I look, I look for designing something special and something different, unique, and um, we try to uh, find things that are also useful in the market. So, you know, I think a lot of the utility aspect um, in our designs, not just in the physical garments, but also in our NFTs. Um, so in the segue of that for our NFT collection, you know, for example, a lot of what we do is actually uh, physically redeemable. So in our collection, when you mint, you actually redeem the physical item, but you also have a gaming integration and metaverse integration. So we're the first fashion brand to have a where to earn aspect where we reward you with tokens as you wear the products in the metaverse. Um, and you know, you're promoting the brand, but you're also uh, earning at the same time. So let's say you're we're integrated to a play to earn game, you're also able to earn rewards, not just from the play to earn game, but also with us. That's genius, brother. You're taking influencer into web three. That's what that sounds like to me a little bit. You're gonna have metaverse influencers wearing your stuff in game and they're gonna get rewarded for it. I think that's awesome. So I'm curious to know, would you consider those who wear your fashion, IRL, purchase the NFTs, and now step into the metaverse, would you consider them as an influencer or rather someone who is rocking your, your, your outfits, rocking your wearables and, and, and subconsciously or inadvertently just sharing your brand? Yeah, so I, I think of it as, you know, like every single time that you put on a logo or brand, you're already, uh, you're attaching yourself to an identity, right? So I think it's, uh, for, for me, it's more so like we are a community that is like, hey, we're rewarding you for representing our community. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also curious, I want to lean into this a little bit more because there are three separate components to what you've created here in your fashion brand. The IRL component, the actual clothing that you can actually physically wear IRL, and then there's the NFTs. You hold the NFTs, you now have, I uh, understand I, you would have access to, to the wearable and so that you can wear it in the metaverse. So there's three separate components here. How do they all tie in together? How did you build this brand with these three separate components? When were there any obstacles that you encountered as you were building this out? Yeah, so in terms of how I combined uh, these three elements and with the thought process was I grew up playing a ton of games, right? And uh, how I got into NFTs is that direct correlation of actually understanding that, hey, digital goods can be traded and sold um, just like an NFT. So for example, like a World of Warcraft or RuneScape League of Legends uh, game account, you know, people would level up, buy rare items, get rare items, and then sell it on eBay or something. So when I understood like, wow, like people buy digital goods um, and people are doing that for a game, and then I saw, well, what if that game could be traded across different games. So if you grew up playing this one game, but then you sold this and traded it, and now you're able to transfer all your assets or the time spent to a different game, how valuable would that be for a kid growing up? So I wanted to create something that was uh, useful long-term and uh, had that in mind, you know, because I feel like in the ecosystem of spending money, you know, you, uh, as somebody is investing into you or the brand, uh, what does that lifestyle cycle look like is really important. And to me, it made sense that that life cycle would continue throughout somewhere. So if somebody is able to wear it in a metaverse in the game, and then they're playing it in this game, but they want to transfer it over and wear it into this other game, but then they're also earning and getting rewarded in some other ways, um, that was important. Uh, it was also just a passion from being like growing up gaming. Um, then on this portion of like having it in real life, you know, I think that's just something like there's 
there's still something about having a physical item, right? You know, it's uh, tangible, it's real, and to be honest, the NFT market just has, you know, these companies with $500 million valuations, but they just have really shit merch, you know? It's just like Gildan screen print t-shirts. It's like, Amen, what are you brother. doing? Amen. Yeah, so um, uh, it, it really was something that was like an obvious answer, like, hey, we are a fashion brand, we do this. Uh, let's come into the space. Gold, gold. And it, it does sound like you started with the wearables and then you worked backwards from the, to the NFT to the IRL. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? No, You're no. So we've been, we've been around as a brand since 2017, you know, so like um, before I, I was into crypto, I was in crypto in 2017 as well. So uh, while I was literally in this like small closet of a co-working space in Soho of our office, you know, we had like two desks and like a little uh, samples in, in the back. Um, I was buying Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, betting on meme coins on a, a Cryptopia, which is a, a exchange that was also a, a giant rug. Um, but essentially, you know, in during that period, I got into crypto and I saw, you know, that market moving, but I continued with fashion. So in that whole process, you know, like of my career, I've been uh, grateful enough to have like styled some of the largest artists in the world. We've uh, fit some of the biggest artists like Little Baby, Steve Aoki, Tyga, Wale, some of the biggest NBA stars like Kyle Kuzma and so on. So like, you know, we kind of already have reached a certain point as a streetwear brand and it just made sense to me where I was like, hey, well, we have all of this going for us on a streetwear side and all these NFT projects, all they do is pay quote unquote ambassadors um, that we know like, you know, that we know or they follow us as a brand already. And, you know, they would actually be interested in what we do as an NFT project. So we're like, you know, this makes sense for us. And I actually understand the tech. So I was like, hey, like, you know, this would make sense for us as a brand to potentially look into. So it, it was just a, a natural progression of seeing, you know, what was missing and like what I felt like could be done better in the NFT space. Gold, gold. And I, I want to bring Planet Hemp into this conversation because I'm curious to know what is on the horizon as the next phase for Planet Hemp? So, um, so how he had mentioned, people still are, they need the R, R, IRL. You, you need the wearables, the physical piece as well, because we still wear clothes. <laughs> so for, for me, and I think similarly to A-Kings, we were a brand physically before we got into the NFT space. Um, I kind of just like, whenever in like the second half of March 2020, I started buying uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that was whenever I started to realize the potential of the space. Like that was whenever I, it first hit me. Um, and so I just started developing an understanding of NFTs as well. I didn't grow up, like I, I didn't really play that many video games. So it didn't super, it wasn't super natural for me to understand. Um, but for me, the most important thing about what we're doing can be verified and all of our claims can be verified through this NFT project. So right now it's very focused on the physical items and giving our customers access to basically a window into the back of our production shop. They're going to have a access, to, our holders will have access to a portal where they can see batch production numbers, um, like timestamps for production. So when it's cut and when it's sewn, whenever it's packaged and shipped, um, they'll be able to follow the, the piece that they ordered from cut, sewed, all the way to shipment. And it's really more about that, the window into our physical production process for right now. In the future though, I see us moving more towards like an education um, model of, I wanna say an NFT project, but it would also include like metaverse real estate and I would like to see us have a, a storefront and a space where you can come in and learn about hemp and the reason behind it not just um, the the pieces themselves because for what we make the story is really in the sustainability and the production process so we really want to help educate our customers gold gold so one of the biggest incentives of an, an nft or investing in the nft or creating an nft collection is the primary and secondary marketplace so I'm curious to know, can you share more about the transferability of your fashion NFTs? So as you were saying earlier about the, the reselling market, I think that with one of the things 
that is valuable about our project is it verifies the rarity on the blockchain of a particular item. So if somebody wants to go and resell a piece, they can also have A, the digital image of it to show somebody, but also all of the uh, basically statistics of the, of the garment um, from a sustainability standpoint, but also from a rarity standpoint. Um, so I think that actually aids with like resellers of physical items um, and Gary Vee talks about it a lot too. It's almost like reselling a ticket from a Super Bowl. It just is selling like the, the legendary event that occurred, like the proof that you were at that legendary event that occurred. So that's, that's how I see the value in the secondary market for our project. But what, what do you think? What about for you? Yeah, so for us, we have a couple different components of where I see the value comes in the secondary. Uh, in even our existing uh, denims, you know, when we release a limited edition product, for example, some of our items brand new on eBay would go for 100 to $150 over retail. And then on the secondary for the worn side already, it's on uh, physical items, it's, you know, people are uh, selling it for maybe 50% below retail after they wear it. So we saw a secondary value in our physical goods already. Um, and now what we're kind of seeing in the digital and NFT side is, well, one, yes, we do have uh, people trading that will be trading, you know, the digital NFT so that they can wear the physical products. But there's also the aspect of, hey, people already own certain jeans or T-shirts and hoodies physically from us. And they um, may not be able to get that item upon mint from the random loot box that we have generated. So they may go trade and seek that item. So we're going to see you know, a hype or demand uh, just from that alone. Uh, the other components that I'm kind of seeing and uh, it, that will drive up our floor price and our secondary is really the airdrops and the uh, other perks that we're rewarding. You know, so for example, we have uh, a game token issuance. So the game token issuance is going to be for rewarding you while you're wearing your, the products in the metaverse, but also is going to be rewarded for first edition card holders, which is for our May 15th uh, Genesis drop. And in that uh, aspect of just the token uh, airdrop alone, I think there's a, a value to it. Um, I think the last part of it as well is like the, uh, the collaborations and the events that we have planned in our roadmaps right now. So we have a ton of collaborations uh, planned with other brands as well as celebrities that we um, are either customers of ours or friends of ours and um, we're already in talks with to kind of do other drops with. And for all first edition card holders, we plan to give additional incentives, whether that's like a free airdrop of an additional NFT or an early whitelist to those collections. Um, so I think the list really goes on for like the possibilities of what we can do with our collection, right? Like even as I uh, build out the metaverse world, what I plan to do is create secondary marketplaces that's NFT gated for you know certain collection holders. If you hold a certain amount of our NFT collection, you're getting access to, let's say, a whitelist for exclusive projects that um, you're not normally able to get white, uh, whitelisted for, or um, you know a ton, like the list just keeps going on for what we have planned for giving value back to the project and continue to do so because for me, like I built this brand as a very public person and um, it's not something that I want to just have uh, fumble in a sense, you know, we're not here to just drop an NFT collection and disappear. You have your name attached to it now, so you gotta, yeah. you gotta stick with the people. 100%. Yes, and with fashion NFTs that are only available IRL, there is a component in which you have to consider in which the value of the actual material will decompose, will degrade, will end up in a thrift store or a, a ditch somewhere. So with these NFT fashions or fashion NFTs, there is continuous value within having the ability to wear the NFTs in, in the metaverse. So it, it, can, it, it allows for you to continue to provide value to your community in perpetuity. That asset doesn't depreciate like a, like a physical item would. 
Exactly, exactly. I'm curious to know, being a female here up on, on the stage with you, are there, can you speak more on the fashion in terms of the, the multi-gender wearing abil wearability of your fashion NFTs? Yeah, so actually our jeans are, are primarily unisex. So, you know, we have uh, a very special J-shaped curve that I, I wish we um, would be able to present. But, uh, you know, that curve allows you to wear it not just in unisex, but also for many different heights. So, you know, somebody that's 5'1 to an NBA player who's 7'1 is a able to wear the same jean. Um, so you can kind of... Um, so we wanted to translate that as well into the metaverse and, um, you know, so of course we start with streetwear and we think of this as like this one uh, uniform, but as we grow and the beauty of digital space is that we're able to test uh, products faster and more quickly. So, you know, we definitely have plans to create more uh, female focused um, avatar uh, outfits as well. For us, most of our stuff is Actually, our line is more women's focused and unisex focused. The men's line is kind of secondary because me personally, I'm a pretty simple guy. I wear like sweatpants and sweatshirts and t-shirts pretty much. Um, and most of our pieces are either unisex or women's anyway. So we'll see, you'll see us replicate that in the metaverse as well. Gold, and I, I feel like I spot one of your collections there. Is that one of your, your, wear, your collections right there? This gentleman wearing one of your shirts? Yes. Well, would you mind coming up and sharing that with everyone here today? And this particular piece I saw worn on both a gentleman and a female. So it is one. Of, is this one of your pieces yes. that's for both? Yeah. So this is the floral button down uh, from our new spring summer collection. I'd rock that. <laughs> Beautiful. Walk it out. Walk it out. <laughs> My, my girlfriend is in the audience here wearing my hoodie Okay, as well, yes, so please are... join us here. Please show, <laughs> please show the, the merch. Yes, we want to see, we want to see. And then the shirt I'm wearing is also unisex as okay, well. Okay, we're going to have to do a fashion show up here. Yes, beautiful. See Look that fit, That's see that my fit. Baby girl. <laughs> gold, gold. Wonderful. Thank you, Corey. I mean, we are at a fashion NFT por uh, panel right now. We got to show off the fashion, right? I think fashion and NFTs go together so well. I mean, I've actually heard a lot of people who don't, uh, don't love the fact that NFTs somewhat in the earlier stages have been used as like a display of wealth in some ways. But I think that f fashion in general and for some people has, um, has have had that same utility basically as a display of wealth. And honestly, I think some people don't love that, but I actually think that, um, like the, I think was it, somebody on the board at Ethereum said something about how they don't, they don't want people to just use it for selling pictures of monkeys. Um, and I was like, I kind of disagree with that because those celebrities that are doing that are actually bringing more eyeballs to the space in general, I think. And I think it's actually drawing more attention to all the other possibilities that are within the space. So I don't know what made me say that just now, honestly. But you were flowing. I guess so. That's what happens <laughs> when, you let, when you let it flow. I'm feeling and it. I, I'm feeling a little like out of place up here, honestly, because I'm not wearing fashion NFTs. And I've been thinking to myself for quite a while, why am I not wearing fashion NFTs? And one of the reasons why I'm asking myself this is because I'm finding myself here on stages, igniting events with spoken word, emceeing, moderating, and I'm, I'm gonna be starting a Web3 TV talk show series. And it's like, it only makes sense to be rocking fashion NFTs, something that goes beyond what you're just wearing. You can invite your community to now take part in it, to be a part of this experience. They can log onto the phones and say, ah, I like what she's wearing. And you know, you don't have to tell them to go to Amazon. <laughs> you can tell them, this is my wearable. This is my NFT. Go to this collection. Go to A Kings. Go to Pla Planet Hemp. They'll dye you all in. And it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I agree. Yeah, so while we wrap up this panel, I'm curious to know, are there any last minute words of, or doses of inspo you would like to share with us today? We've got a packed house. You wanna start out?
Do it. That's it. <laughs> let it flow, let it flow. Hey, Kings, any dose, last minute doses of inspo you'd like to share with us today? How do we get started with fashion NFTs? Where do we go to connect with you? Yeah, so our uh, website is akings.com. Uh, the NFT portion is akings.com slash NFTs, uh, slash NFT. Uh, my Instagram is Alan King, A-L-A-N-K-I-N-G. Everybody's on Twitter, though, so unfortunately, I did not get Alan King on Twitter, so I'm Alan King NY. Um, if somebody is a Twitter plug out in the audience or uh, watching this later, please hit me up. I need Alan King. Thanks. <laughs> gold, gold. What about yourself, Planet Hemp? How can we connect with you, Samuel? So I'm planethemp.cool on Instagram, and that's also our website URL. And I would just give us a follow on Instagram. That's where we're going to be posting most of our stuff. But if you're on Twitter, because I know most of you are, it's planethemp412, representing Pittsburgh. And it looks like I had a question in the audience. Can I take a question? Yes, most definitely. Do we have a question from the audience? We'll take this beautiful guy here in the green shirt. What, what do you got here? Okay. I think this is for both of you guys. You guys both seem like you guys are both doing amazing things out in this space. Where do you guys Thank see you. yourself in the next three years? Oh, you want to take this one? Yeah, so I see um, A Kings as becoming the leading, one of the leading brands in the Web3 and streetwear space. Um, you know, we actually had a P4P collaboration project that sold out last year already. And now we're pl planning our Genesis launch on May 15th. Um, and I think that there's re very few independent designers that are actually in the space. And while there's a lot of corporations that are moving into this space, um, you know, there needs to be more streetwear designers uh, and independent designers moving into the space that are taking it seriously. And I think uh, A Kings is the one leading the charge for it. Nice, I like it. I like your angle from it, Al. Um, for, for Planet Hemp, in three years, I see us leading the space in, uh, in hemp fashion. And I th I'm approaching it with sort of a champion style business model. Um, we're selling m like minimally branded pieces. So I definitely see a lot more companies moving towards sustainability and using our pieces to you know, put their own brands on and build their brands on top of um, while we still sell our own retail brand as well. And I think we're just gonna expand in that space and use uh, Web3 to educate people on the sustainability of hemp and help them just have a, a say in what we produce and how much of it we produce. So yeah, that's what I see. Gold, so gearing up for your vision that you just shared, A. Kings and Samuel, I'm curious to know, would this vision be plausible without the support of quote unquote influencers, collaborators, and those within your community wearing your brand, would you dare drop a Genesis collection without already having that all dialed in or having a community built around it? Would your vision come to fruition without, all, without any of that? And this is a question for those who are considering creating their own fashion NFT brands and, and dropping a Genesis collection in the fashion space. This is to help identify and define their, their roadmap. Yeah, well, I think anybody that uh, wants to drop uh, or release anything, whether it's like an NFT or a company and uh, does that without an audience or a community is just not really thinking. And, uh, you know, you, without a community, you just don't have uh, anybody really to support and to buy it. So it, it doesn't really make sense. Um, the community is really the core driving aspect of um, any ecosystem. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And to add on to that, like like he said, Alan and I, we, we, have, we already have communities built around our, our clothing brands. Um, but I don't know about A King's customer base, but Planet Hemp's customer base, they're, they're buying clothing, but most of my customers are um, still learning about the value of NFTs and don't always, don't fully understand the value of NFTs. So my community is there and I'm, I have to really engage them. They don't, it's not just that they're there, you have to have a full conversation with them and listen to them and get their feedback too about what they want. 
because not only do you need that community, but you also have to have their input and listen to them and cater to, their, to what they actually want. Gold. So you've heard it here today. Community is king. Community is queen. The fashion NFTs are about to take over the Web3 space. So let's go. Yeah, buddy. Please join me in giving another round of applause to A Kings and Planet Hemp. Be sure to check out Planet Hemp's Thank booth you. on the other side of this wall. Oh, yeah. Come over say what's up. You can feel the fabric. It's really soft. Feel the fabric. Feel it. <laughs> You're welcome.